Dungeon Derby is five pounds of pure awesome. Let's open up the box and jump into how, exactly how you play this game. First thing we see is a full color rule book. We will just set this aside as we already know how to play. We'll just jump right in. We're gonna wanna set the board up within reach of everyone. Um, we got a nice high color, high detail board here. The first thing that stands out to us is the racetrack in the middle. Off to the right hand side, we have the numbers that are gonna be the lineup, help us line up the champions. We have the main board down the middle. We have a halfway point. It's gonna help us with different spells and abilities and the finish line. Dungeon Derby is divided into phases. Uh, and these phases are found on the side of each of the betting boards to help with the flow of the game and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Uh, the game comes with six betting boards, so you can play with up to six people. And it doesn't really matter which betting board which player gets, so just deal them out randomly or preference for the art. We're going to take out the treasure cards. The treasure cards are denoted by the gray and trophy backing, gray and gold backing. Uh, we're going to set that on the treasure draw pile on the board. We'll pull out the quest cards, uh, and we'll set those on the quest draw area of the board as well. Now, quest cards are for people who are out of money. You can only quest if you have lower than the starting amount, which is less than 250, and they're just kind of there to make sure that you stay in the game. We'll pull out the purse cards, and we're going to set those at the top of the board. Now, we'll deal out a number of purse cards equal to the amount of races we want to play that game. For a good 30-40 minute game, we'll probably deal out 5 purse cards. Next up are the champions. Uh, in this video, we're only showing the cardboard chit versions of the champions, but they will be full uh, three-dimensional minis that will look a lot like these, but freestanding 3D miniatures. The detail on them is awesome. They'll each be their individual color that corresponds to the character on, on each of the betting boards. I'm going to lay them face down. This is actually going to be easier to help explain the game to be able to show you what they look like from the top. Next thing that's coming out is the encounter tokens. First we have six character encounter tokens. These are going to be dealt to each of the six players. Now there's a front side and a back side. We got stolen treasure and stolen hundred dollars. We're going to give one of these to each of the six players depending on the betting board that they have. Now these are the, the rest of the encounter tokens. We're going to split these up into their type and set them at the top of the board. Later in the video I zoom the camera out and you can really see that they're all up there in the top right. Next we have the betting chips. There's six of each character. We're going to make sure that each player gets one of each of these tokens. This is what you use to bet. The reason that they're chips and aren't printed directly onto the board is so that you can hide what you bet. And that'll kind of make sense as we play uh, later on. But the six spots on each of the betting board is for the six character tokens. The front side is an image of the character that you can bet on and the back side is the logo so you can hide your bet. As I mentioned, you're gonna be playing armor cards uh, face down and you don't want people to know what you're doing and so it, it really helps to not give away your plans by being able to hide your bet. The last thing we got to do is give each player $250 in betting chips. That's two $100 tokens and one $50 token. The game comes with $10 chips, $50 chips, $100 chips, $500 chips, $1,000 chips, and $5,000 chips. And the last chip is the Dungeon Master token. This will denote who is rolling the dice for that race. We have two dice. One of them is a number dice. The other is a champion dice. We roll them at the same time, and it will tell us which champion moves how far down the board. We've zoomed out a little bit so you can see where to put the purse cards and the encounter tokens. Um, the first thing we gotta do, jumping in, if you look at the phase, the phases on the betting cards, is deal each player three treasure cards. Now in a six player game, we're gonna deal three treasure cards. In a four player game, you deal four treasure cards to each player, and in a three player game, you deal five treasure cards to each player. 
So we'll make sure that each player has their stack of three cards since we're playing with six this round. And we'll give everybody a chance to look at their treasure cards while we move to the next step, which is the lineup phase. We're going to flip over the purse card, and at the top of the purse card, it's going to show us the order that the champions are going to be racing in. Now, this might not be as important for the first race, but as encounters are added to the board, it's going to become more and more important that we switch up the order. The next thing that's on the purse card that I'm doing right now is the purse money and prizes for first, second, and third place. It's going to give us the amounts for first, second, and third, and we're just going to put those on the treasure chest at the bottom left side of the board. Now we move into the next phase, which is the armor slash encounter phase. This is where people can play armor cards. Armor cards are denoted by a yellow background, yellow-orange background, and a little armor symbol. Uh, and they also say armor on them, so it's a lot to uh, really help you understand that those are armor cards. We're going to play those face down, and we're not going to reveal those yet. You're the only one that knows what your armor card was played. You can just see that there might be more. Now, these are about half good and half bad, so there's really no way to tell. Also, during this phase, we're going to play encounter cards. This all happens in real time, so players are discarding their encounter cards, playing their armor cards face down, and filling the board with traps and encounters and treasure. You can only play two of each encounter in each lane. So in some of the traps have four encounters, so you'd only be able to put two in each in, in any given lane. Now we're going to allow some time for each of the characters to put their champion trap token on the board and pick which side they want. Do they want to steal treasure from whoever lands there or steal money from whoever lands there? That kind of depends on them. Now the difference between a character champion encounter token and a regular encounter token is when an encounter is triggered they come off the board but the next round the champion encounter tokens get put back on the board by whoever's champion the encounter belongs to. Now that the board is set we're going to close down that phase and we're going to move to the betting phase. I'm going to put 200 on Marion Lamb and 50 on my own guy. We'll see how we do. I'm going to hide all my other ones so nobody knows what I've bet on. I've put down two really good armor cards on Marion Lamb, and he kind of has an open lane. Only positive cards. And I'm going to get my spell cards ready because we're about to jump into the race. We'll lock down the betting phase. No more bets can change. And we will reveal the armor cards in play. On Captain Tiberius, we have the utility belt that will give him a plus one. On the Pied Piper, we have a Crab Trap, so that'll give him minus two to die rolls. That's not good. Now, on Marion Lamb, I did a pretty sweet combo. I got Spicy Potion and plus two, and I have Harpy Wings, which will give him a one dice head start. So before any other racer goes, we'll, we'll start moving down the board. We got Hired Paw on Worm and the Twins. That'll let him reroll any ones that he has. I love that art. It's kind of blurry. And we have the Bag of Weights on Rock and Roller. This will mean that he will not leave the gate no matter what, so any bets on him are negated. Now, if you play a spell card that swaps his lane, could be pretty good for you. He could end up coming back. Now, on the last guy, we have Centipede Boots. That'll give her a plus three to movement. So the Dungeon Master token's in my hand this turn. So first thing we got to do is roll the one dice head start. Two. Not that bad. And here we go. So we'll start by moving Worm four. Captain Tiberius will move 5, 6, plus his 1. Now on that 1 dice head start, it says that uh, do this before adding any dice modifiers. So that's why I didn't add the dice modifier to that. Now Rock and Roller's got a, uh, a 5, but he's not going to move because he's stuck in the gate. Worm and the Twins have another 5. So that'll put them very close to the finish line. Within four, and you know what? I have a spell. So I'm going to play Shadow Portal. That will let me move any character to the same line as another character. So I'm going to throw him right up there with Worm and the Twins. And I'm going to play my other spell, which is Fizzled Wand, which lets me move up to three characters back three spaces. I'm going to choose to move only two back three spaces, and I'm going to trigger that trap. Removing it from the board and putting Worm back at the first spot. I also got to steal a treasure from Captain Tiberius because he landed on my trap, and I'll remove that from the board as well. We'll keep moving. Captain Tiberius with a 2 plus 3 gets him right up to the halfway point. 
Worm goes another four. For some reason, these three are just moving down the board, and he is still stuck. Captain Tiberius with another five. It is anybody's game. One roll for Marion Lamb, and Marion Lamb pick it up with a four. So what happens now? I won. So what we do, the first thing we got to do is we give up first, second, and third place. So I'll grab the first place prize. I'll give it to the character representing Marion Lamb. We're going to grab second place and give it to the player representing Tiberius. And third prize goes to Worm and the Twins. That is the first step in the payout phase. The second step is we get everybody's losses. Whoever's playing the bookie for the game is going to collect any bet that did not win first place. Only bets on first place win. So I had 200 on Marion Lamb. So for this race, it's 5 to 1 odds. You can check on the purse card for the odds of that race. So I'm going to make a good 1,000 Gs. Not 1,000 Gs, sorry. 1,000 coins. Take off all losses, only bets on first place payout. So after payout phase, we're going to remove the treasure cards from the board. We're going to leave all the encounters there. We're going to redeal everybody's hand up to three or whatever the max is. If you're playing with three, we're going to deal back up to five. Once everybody has their cards in their hand, we're going to move the Dungeon Master token to the next player. And we are going to move on to the lineup purse phase. We flip over the next purse card. Now you can see that the lineup really affects it because the encounter tokens stay on the board. So where you might stack one lane because that's where you are, it could switch next lane and, and really just be detrimental to your character, your champion, and his health or her health. Next, we're going to figure out the purse payouts for first, second, and third. And we start over. We go back to the next phase, armor and encounter phase. Players play armor, fill the dungeon with treasures and traps, bet, race, cast spells, and get paid. Dungeon Derby is super simple. One time through, one round, everybody at the table should have a very good understanding of how to play, and the game should really fly after that. Well, thanks for watching. That is Dungeon Derby's how to play video, and watch for us on Kickstarter. Thanks, everybody. Bye.